Hello and welcome to NC Bold STEM Asians Get Creative with STEM. My name is Leslie Pope and I will be your facilitator today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you will see the passions that I have with STEM and literacy really shine through. First of all, let's get you started by grabbing a copy of your own slides. You can do this one of two ways. Open up your camera, scan your QR code, or in your browser, type in bit.ly forward slash NC Bold STEM. Please note that is all that is case sensitive and all of the letters are lowercase today. I'm going to give you a minute to do that and then we'll get started. Okay, so I just want to go over just a little bit about me so you'll know um, who is facilitating uh, with you today. Again, I'm Leslie Pope. Right now I serve as a District Instructional Technology Facilitator with Craven County Schools. I'm only about 40 minutes from the beach and it is a wonderful little place to be. Um, I have a lot of certifications. Um, a lot of them I have just gotten within the past five to six years, the one that I held the most and that I had the most experience with is being a classroom teacher in grades two through six. I've also been an instructional coach, a STEM specialist, a media coordinator, and again, a DIFT. Uh, probably one of my favorite certifications that I did get was media coordinator. Um, that's really where my heart is and media coordinators. If you're on here, you're my people. I, you can see that I rescue pups. I have a picture in the top uh, corner here of Leo, our puppy. Um, then our little grandma down at the bottom, Puggles. She's almost 15. And then this is a picture of my uh, 14 year old triplets. So they keep my husband and I very busy and on our toes. So let's dive in and get started. David Rose is one of my favorite characters on TV. Sad that show had to end, but I just want you to be able to tell me, even though we can't talk or chat about it, how it's going. How did your school year go? How is your summer going and everything that you have planned? Um, what I would like for you to do is it says click here. So I would like for you to click and when you do, you're going to see a Jamboard pop up and I'm just going to stop my webcam so you can interact. So this is how Jamboard works. How's it going? Use your initials and place a sticky note around the David Rose picture that depicts how you're doing. So over here in the left-hand corner, you're going to grab a sticky note. You can choose a different color if you want to. I'm going to use my initials and I'm going to, and you see that? Yes, let me edit that. It was a good thing that I did that. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that I am a number two today. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm enjoying the weather and school is almost out. So that's what you're going to do. I'm going to give you just a few minutes to do that. Um, you'll be able to see how you can easily manipulate and move those around if you need to. Um, you could even turn them, flip them around if you wanted to with the little arrow there. But this just gives you a little bit of exposure to Google Jamboard and how you could use this as an SEL check with your students. David Rose might not be appropriate for elementary, but 
definitely maybe middle or high school, they would appreciate his facial expressions. So go ahead and do that. And as you do that, you'll be able to see as other people interact, you'll be able to see how the number of sticky notes will grow. So feel free to come back and check that out. And we're going to go ahead and connect again before content. Now, if we were face to face, this is what we would do with a famous couple match. So basically I have this linked where I purchased the couple match from because I needed the pictures. For the example, I have Rachel, uh, Rachel and Ross, couple from friends, and that would be the moment when you would get up and you would move, you would find your other half, and then you would introduce yourself. What's your role in education? How long have you been in education? Why are you here today? And what is something unique about yourself? And then we would take just a few minutes for people to introduce their partner. So I didn't want to leave that out. I wanted to share that because I thought that was a really neat way to kind of break the ice without it being too much for our introverts. So let's talk about our goals today. Our goals today is to learn about the engineering design process to understand the purpose of STEM in the classroom, to have time to learn, which is play plus learn, and rotate to different stations to experience STEMations. STEMations, creation stations, STEM stations, um, however you like to see that, and also to leave with resources about how to build your maker spaces. None of this is um, difficult to do. I've given you a lot of resources and a lot of this you will be able to go and take straight back to your classroom, your media center. Even if you work with teachers, you could even provide PD um, with them about the resources that you're going to give. So let's go. Just my little soapbox for just a minute. STEM should not be used as a special or elective. It belongs in the classroom too. I had a teacher not so long ago when I was introducing myself and sharing what I could do to help support their, um, her school. She told me as I was explaining different things that you can do with STEM and how you can blend it with literacy, math, science, all core subjects and she said mm, I think you might want to get with our STEM teacher because she's the one that does all of this stuff and I was like oh but you can do it too she said the curriculum is jam-packed we don't have time our administrator said we need to get back to the basics I get you we're just coming out of a pandemic um, we're just trying to get things back to normal, but are things ever really going to be back to normal? I really don't think so. Um, and I don't think it takes a whole lot of time to get your STEM into the instructional day. And I'm going to share with you how you can very sneakily do that. And then sometimes it's just outright a STEM project a PB, that can go in with PBL, problem solving, collaboration, creativity. It's all the skills that kids are going to need when they go out into the workforce. It's very different these days the workforce is. Very different from how you and I have been in the workforce for the amount of time we have. Um, and a little quote I'd like to uh, leave you with, science in everyday life cannot and should not be separated. I know in core subject, we're teaching things in isolation, but sometimes it can blend in so well. Please take opportunities to seek, seek that out because it is a beautiful thing when you can blend STEM in with it. Okay, so a little bit about um, the engineering design process. It kind of goes in a circle where you're asking you're researching your problem, you're imagining it, developing those possible solutions, you're making a plan, you're selecting a solution, the create part, 
which students absolutely love. They love to create. The testing part, which they love even more. But now let's look at improve. This is the step that is often overlooked. We run out of time. We only have 45 minutes. I've got to get this in in 45 minutes and I've got to move on. The improve step is so important. Come back to it and let them redesign as needed. Let them experience failure, first attempt in learning, and let them be able to go back and see if they can figure it out again. This is where we teach our students perseverance. And that is one thing that they don't have a lot of nowadays because everything has instant gratification because of all the technology. Technology is great, but when we take a look at it in terms of video games, it's giving them exactly what they want when they want, and they've got to learn to kind of slow down and smell the roses, so to speak, and keep uh, trying to do better. I do have a website linked here that you can access on your own time that kind of explains the engineering design process in more details. I also have some templates that I'm going to share with you later in the presentation that start on slide 25. When you go back and you review this, this might be something you want to go ahead and click on. I know some of you are clicking on it right now because you want to see some of the templates. Okay, so now comes the fun part. It comes the stimations time. So if we were face to face, I would have these stations set up around the um, classroom or the room that we're in, and you would rotate to the different stations. Now I'm going to go ahead and preface this with, yes, I like to link everything to digital standards. However, with STEM, not all the time does everything have to be tech. So you're going to be doing a pretzel STEM partner activity, okay? That is no tech. The resource is ready to be printed and used. It only requires pe preparation of putting the pretzels in the bags ahead of time. We're going to take a look at the Merge Cube, which is 100% technology. We're going to take a look at an activity called Roller Coaster, which explores force and motion. And we're also going to take a look at the story, the magic hat and the straws and connectors activity that goes with that. Now notice it says no tech and or tech because I'm gonna give you alternatives of ways that you can use it with technology also if you prefer. And then Iggy Peck Architect was a special lesson plan that I put together when I was going through my Creative Commons certification. Um, and I have a lot of different options again with no tech and tech. All of these have been linked for you. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the pretzel, pretzel stem challenge. Give it a second to load. So you can see here that I have simple directions because this can be done with students as little as kindergarten. And I truly believe that kinders can. So please do not tell me that kinders can't because they can. You just might have to slow it down and explain it to them really slowly. So they're going to sit back to back with their partner. Both partners are going to have two minutes to create something using all six pretzel sticks. And you have to understand that when you have STEM challenges, that's what I call them, um, you're going to have to really set the rules for the kids because that sometimes is what makes it difficult because they'll use three sticks and they'll be like, I'm done because they're trying to get it done really quickly. But the caveat here is you have to use all six pretzel sticks. Um, when the time is up, partner A is going to explain to partner B what he or she has made without saying the word. Um, there's directions there that the partner needs to look straight ahead and listen carefully. 
and try to guess. Then partner B is going to have his or her turn to explain to partner A what he or she made. Okay, and you'll find, especially if this is like one of the, the STEM activities that you do first, which I recommend because it's um, low prep and it really gives you a chance to go over the rules and they get to learn what a challenge looks like. Um, this is great to do with family members or also colleagues. Next, we have the Merge Cube. And what I've done is I've linked some of my slides in for Merge Cube. But Merge Cube um, explores STEM concepts um, in augmented reality. It allows students to experience history and science. I will tell you that the majority of the apps are free, but there are some paid apps. Now, I know that I should be promoting the free apps, and I will in just a minute. But my absolute favorite worth every single penny app is 57 degrees north for Merge Cube. So I want to show you this short trailer that gives you an idea of what you're going to see with the 57 degrees north. <laughs> Rock! Sasha yelled from the front of the small boat. Alaska's inside passage was a labyrinth of islands, and he honestly had no idea where they were. Phenomenal, phenomenal app. When I first saw this, I was actually, um, had gone into a middle school to see how they use STEM in their classrooms. Um, and, and two ELA classes were together sharing the iPads and the Merge Cubes. Um, and it was, they were, they were doing the parts of the story with it and the different endings and I will tell you that I've done this with different groups I've done it whole class with a classroom I used it with AIG students I had probably 90% of them go home and ask to purchase the merge cubes because they wanted to be able to go through every single scenario and um, achieve all the endings not just one or two endings but all of them because it is a choose your own adventure experience um, this is kind of a picture of what it looks like with your students highly recommend partnering them up together probably wouldn't do more than just a set of partners just so everyone has the opportunity to um, use the merge cube and Continuing with the Merge Cube, I have some links here, and I'm going to give you some time to explore because I know it's a lot, and you're going to get to pick and choose what you would like to do. I have it linked, a list of apps. If you do not have a Merge Cube with you, but you would like to play around with it, there is a paper Merge Cube that works the same. The only thing you need is your app. Um, from your device and you're good to go. Highly recommend Mr. Body and then Anatomy AR. You'll see that some of them, again, are paid, but the most popular free apps are um, here in this picture. And if you go to the Merge Cube website, um, you'll be able to see all of the apps that you can download. Just a phenomenal resource. Next is the roller coaster, and this is actually where I bring my love of literacy in, and I use the story roller coaster um, to kind of hook them in uh, 
get that literacy in. This could be something you do as your read aloud for the day or your read aloud for the week. Um, where it says click, that is simply the Amazon link to order. I know there are a lot of other places that you can order from. Um, Amazon's probably my favorite just because I'm getting them a little cheaper because I'm, I'm buying them on my own, as most of you are. <clears throat> These are different options that uh, tech and no tech their favorite, I'm going to tell you, involves tech, and that is designing, building, and testing roller coasters online. You go to this amusement park physics, and they get to read all of the information. Obviously, this is for older kids. Um, they get, or unless you want to do the read alouds for them, which would work too. They get to create their own roller coaster, and it says design a roller coaster. So they read all of the information, and they already have background information of force and motion. You're using your science standards with this. And at the end, as you go through and you make your choices, it will tell you, it will give you a thumbs up for safety and a thumbs up or a thumbs down for the experience of it all. Um, and it explains why you did well, why you made good choices, or why you didn't make good choices. Phenomenal. I've had some students find other type of amusement rides that you can design. We focused on roller coasters, but of course, for those early finishers, they can definitely explore the site. So that's just something fun for you to check out and look at. But then you can also engineer a roller coaster for a marble to travel through. Use the edges of a paper plate or a pool noodle works great. They can create a sign for their roller coaster or measure speed, velocity, distance, and time. So there's lots of different ways to modify and differentiate for all of your learners. The next station is the Magic Hat. And again, um, I've linked a book here called The Magic Hat. That's your Amazon link to order. You're going to be using straws and connectors with this. Now, initially, this has no technology. If you use Seesaw or if you use Flipgrid, any type of <clears throat> way for them to record themselves, to show you what they're doing, to show you their thought process, that is a great way to bring in your technology. I have an Amazon link to order the straws um, and connectors. I'm going to stop the webcam so you can see the picture over here in the right-hand corner. Those are the straws and connectors. If you've ever heard of Strawbees, those are the name brand. I would rather use the straws and connectors any day over the name brand. You can see that they have to make a hat that fits on their head and will stand up straight. They can use a timer on the activity that's completely optional. Um, I would have them work in collaborative partners or groups of uh, no more than a group of three. And they can also bring math into it by measuring the height of the hat, looking at the numbers of shapes, um, or 3D figures that they have created, they're going to be able to figure out, especially the smaller they are, that it's not a square bottom that's going to fit their heads unless they have a big, unless they have a large big head. <clears throat> it's going to be the triangle um, that works. So a lot of them just, they really, um, the competitiveness comes out in them with this because there, you can make it into a contest. Who's going to have the tallest hat that will stand on the head without falling over? Um, this is probably my most involved stimmation. Uh, this is the book. I use the book Iggy Peck Architect. Andrea uh, Betty has a series of stem books that you can purchase there's this one, there's Rosie Revere, Engineer. There's also um, Erin Slater, Illustrator. She's got other one, a couple of other ones out too. They're phenomenal and always linked to a moral of the story and STEM. 
So the moral of this story is that there's there's power in teamwork because Iggy Peck, he wanted to work by himself until one day his class got in the predicament and then <clears throat> they had to work together to solve a problem. The link to the lesson is here. So you can see that I provided an objective and a hook, and I also included Padlet. I really love Padlet. It's free for the first three, or you can pay a yearly subscription in order to keep all of your Padlets. I've used Padlet so long that I pay for the yearly subscription. I know different people have different thoughts about that, but I love it. So this is the Padlet that they can use, which gets in that technology use. And I'm gonna let it load again. It says to check out the pictures of structures and answer the questions under the structure you'd like to live in or on. What is your favorite part of the structure? What do you think it's made of? What can you do with this structure that you can't do at school? So I just gave them some modern buildings, choices, some museums, a couple of bridges, um, a couple of tree houses, and a couple of castles and so i'm going to stop the webcam again and so under here you see the pluses this is where you can add comments here or you can add other pieces of architecture if you would like to um notice i did link underneath of them the unsplash link I was able to use all of these photos and not have to worry about copyright because that's what you can do with sites like Unsplash. So that is one way to tie in technology to it. Um, their activity is where they're actually going to go through the engineering design process <clears throat> and they're gonna basically build something, build a bridge or any type of structure using specific materials. You can have those materials set up around the room, um, or you can just give them materials um, in a bucket or just place them on a table and have them use um, what is there. And the caveat is, is that they cannot ask for more. They can only use what's there. And that, right, that increases the level of the challenge and the problem solving. So these STEM activities are really raising the bar in terms of your critical thinking that students need. They can use Google Drawings to sketch out their design and label materials. You can use Flipgrid to record your reasonings. You can use Seesaw, Screencastify, whatever you can think of. And I'm just gonna give this a bump down, and I have linked a rubric for designing the structure just to make it easy. And what I have done down here is just highlighted an example where they got fours all the way across just to kind of make it easy for you to highlight, print these, highlight, or use them just like this and be able to share them back with the students, especially if you use um, an LMS like uh, Google Classroom or Canvas. Um, another video messaging site that I really like is Loom. Loom is free and it's used like Screencastify. Um, so those are very similar. I just like to throw all the options out there that I can think of because I know different people have um, different preferences. Okay. So now it is time to plumb. And I got that word from a colleague of mine a few years ago, and I have loved it, and it's always stuck with me, and I even use it with my students. <clears throat> you're going to take the next 15 minutes, and you're going to explore any resources in more detail. You want to be ready to share how you would incorporate it during the instructional day.
because at the end of our time together, um, there's another Padlet that you're going to share how you would incorporate it. And that Padlet I have had for over a year um, as I do different presentations, just so we just have this long running list of ideas and ways that you can use these in your classroom, your media center with adult learners, um, just whatever is going on during your instructional day. So let's go ahead and have some exploration time. I'm going to leave the timer on and when the timer is up, we will move along.
just kind of Okay, so our 15 minutes is up, and I hope you enjoyed exploring the resources. Please feel free to come back to this and take a look at the slides on your own. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch into Makerspace for just a few minutes. Um, basically, I have a paragraph here that talks about Makerspace, where it originated from, but basically the thing that stands out in my mind is that a Makerspace can be anywhere. Um, it can be as small or as large as you want to make it, um, but it is a hands-on learning approach. Okay, some examples of real world and global connections um, would be an oil spill experiment. Now, I've actually done this when I was a media coordinator with a fifth grade teacher. It met the science standards, and so they created their own habitats. They poured oil over it, and they witnessed the effect of the oil on each material. Um, they had to try to get the oil off of the material to see just how difficult that was. Um, and they got to see the effect that it had on the environment. So that makes learning more interesting and it gives them a real world connection, which is an essential component out of 21st century uh, skills. <clears throat> So I created my own makerspace in a very dated library. Um, <clears throat> you can see I started out by just simply having reading spaces set up for the kids to read. <clears throat> and then I weeded, heavily weeded the nonfiction, which the majority of the nonfiction was, um, it needed to be weeded. Uh, weeded. It was out of date which that's how a lot of nonfiction is. <laughs> um, go through the weeding process of discarding them. And then I started using the empty shelves as a way to make a makerspace. I had permission to do that. Um, so you can see here, we took down the bookshelves. We painted the wall just to give it some life. Um, we used the top of the bookshelf to make um, a floating shelf. And then the last picture is the finished product um, through use of grants that I got from various different places. You can see that this area in the corner became the makerspace. You can see some bins that I had. And I also have bar stools so the kids can sit there. They can work on different things. And then I made some different flexible um, spaces right outside of the makerspace where they can actually do their work. So that's a little bit more involved, but if you just had a space in your classroom or room that you could find as a, de as a designated makerspace, you could do that. 
It could also just be your makerspace is when they are working on an activity and you just get the um, materials out for them to work. This kind of gives you a timeline of events and the data that I collected. You know, I involved, I had a grand opening. I did a Google form survey for teachers. I did a Google form survey for students and just kind of analyzed the, the, the data. I even got feedback from administration. I had asked them to both to please come and see our grand opening, see all the supplies and materials that we had gotten through grants or donations um, and see what it was all about. Because a lot of times I want to say that Makerspace and STEM, it's misunderstood. Um, people think it's something extra that you have to go way outside of the box and do, and it's, it's really not. Um, these are the lessons that I had done with the Alka-Seltzer, which was so much fun for the older kids, and then the ice fishing for the younger kids. And I actually got those ideas from the Bridging the Gap STEM conference, which happens in North Carolina um, around October. And this was the last time in 2019 that they had face-to-face. -face. I'm hoping that it comes back this year. Last year it came back virtual and it just wasn't as good because they had, um, they had so many stations that you could go through and get real life examples, which helped me because I'm a visual learner. So that's why I like to um, include these photos. And in the bottom right, you can see that that's the oil spill. We're going to talk about that in detail in just a minute. Um, so this is a little maker space. Um, when the pandemic happened, everyone had their Bitmoji classrooms. Well, I had a, a Bitmoji maker space. And I still use this um, with students and with teachers when I'm talking about making that maker space. So I'm going to give you time to go through this um, on your own, but if you click on some of the pictures, then you're going to be able to automatically have links to explore them. So for example, this is um, 3D Doodler. It's a 3D printing pen. I did a donor's choose on this and I ended up receiving several of them. It got funded and the kids loved it so much. Some of the parents also donated a couple more just so we couldn't just have it in a center, but we could do a whole class activity with it. So definitely take the time to check those links out. I've tried to be um, really cautious about making sure all the links are there. So you've got some there, um, Dash, that's the robot, Wonder Workshop, absolutely love Dash and all that he brings to classrooms, he or she brings to classrooms. So that's just a fun makerspace, a fun um, way to go through things. And I also have like right down to the slinky and different activities you can do with that. Bring out the slinky because most kids are used to the little versions of the plastic slinkies. They haven't used the metal slinkies and it like fascinates them. So let's talk for a minute about building a makerspace. I have linked a lot of resources here for you. I'm not going to go through all of them, um, but I will tell you that I worked with many media coordinators and administrators last year because STEM was more like my initiative and there were some wish lists that I was asked to help um, be involved in. This is an example of one of them just to get our makerspace up and running in the school and um, a section in the library media center learning commons was created for that but also um, the teachers were able to check out the resources also. The ice fishing and the Alka-Seltzer lesson that I referred to earlier, I have given you access to those lesson plans and linked them with North Carolina standards. 
Also, grants are almost required to be able to build things like you want them to really go above and beyond. So in 2019, 2020, before um, the pandemic hit, I was on a kick. I was going to get everything I needed. So you can see that I use donors choose a lot. Please choose with your district. Some districts have certain guidelines they make you follow if you use donors choose. Um, I did, did apply for a Bright Ideas grant. I did not get that because my library needed books so bad. It, everything was outdated and molded. I didn't get it. <laughs> but I did get other donors choose grants of books. And I did very small amounts. So that way I had a better chance of getting funded. Um, so you can see my highs and lows and what I got, accept, what got accepted and what didn't. I'm going to tell you that Civil Air Patrol, that's something you do on your own. They will provide you with awesome materials. I applied for a grant with them for SNAP circuits, and I got four sets. This fall, I applied for a grant with them to get, I wanted to get more B-Bots because I only had two. They ended up sending me four B-Bots with Bebop mats, and I got four sets of Code and Go mouse. So I'm telling you, Civil Air Patrol, while it seems a little odd, um, they make you join, and you join, I believe it is $35-ish, but you never pay anything else again because every year if you renew in time, they don't charge you a renewal fee. So you're getting hundreds of dollars of STEM materials for next to nothing. So highly, highly recommend you check into that. Um, I do have an example of how my STEAM lesson plans went when I was on the wheel, meaning I was a STEM specialist. The standards, I made sure that I had the standards linked, the topic, and exactly what I was going to do. Some of them I copied and pasted. Um, depending on differentiation, some of them I was doing different activities with. So it's everything from Iggy Peck Architect to Book Snaps to Coding with Osmo and Mini Spiro uh, Golf Designs. Novel Effect is a phenomenal app that you need to use with the books that you read aloud that go with STEM. I linked the site here, and Novel Effect is phenomenal in that when you are reading the story, the app is on, um, it follows along with you. So if you have to pause, if you have to stop, it, it flows with you. Um, it's very interactive. It makes sound effects as you read through the stories, and I am telling you, even middle schoolers, Love it. Going to stop my webcam for a minute and share with you the video so you'll understand what I'm talking Novel about. Novel Effects synchronizes theme music, sound effects, characters' voices as you, the parent, teacher, read the book aloud to your kids. So you just need the app on your phone, tap the book that you're going to read, and then you set your device aside and you open up that physical print. There's no precedent for this. It's a voice-driven audio experience. It's about capturing that child's attention and having them look at you like a hero. So definitely look into that. There is a free version to a certain extent, but they do give educators a discount. And then one of my Makerspace gurus that I follow on social media, um, is Brooke Brown, and she has awesome, awesome STEM lessons and STEM bins. Now, one year I was lucky enough that my administrator let me order some of her bins, and everything comes ready. Like, it's ready to use. Even right down to task cards are cut up for you. It, it's just, it's incredible. It also gives you ideas on how to create your own if you don't have the funds to do that. So, <clears throat> I have additional STEM 
and literacy lessons for you. The way that I like to present my lessons is I like to use Google Slides. Um, that's just a personal prefer preference of mine. If you're using iPads, you know that you can use Apple Keynote also. If you're using Microsoft, you can use PowerPoint. Um, but just clicking on a couple of them, it takes you right to my Google Slides. And this is what I use with the students to kind of preface everything that we are doing. Have some directions up. Um, here I have some goals and then exactly how they're going to do the green screen magic um, and even showing examples. I wasn't, I had to take the video down um, because of privacy concerns, but you could add that and show that to your students. There's the oil, oil spill lesson. And I do want to say, since I mentioned that before, I have um, the Google Slides here that the fifth grade teacher and I um, used. And then I got a grant actually through my district, the director of tech gave us a STEM grant and I was able to order these oil spill kits from Lakeshore. So I linked those there, but of course you can always make your own. But if you have the funds or want to seek out a grant, highly recommend that because that takes a lot of work off of you. And of course there is a link to my favorite lesson with fourth and fifth graders can also be used with middle school and high school is the Sphero mini golf course. Now this is just a brief appendix of templates that you can use with the engineering design process. Redesigning, just holding them accountable, making them think it out, giving them, giving them items that have, that have a value and having them do totals of cost, having them draw things out, the cost of it is an excellent add-on there with math. Um, again, having them plan. They have a budget of $100. There's their materials. Um, I also gave credit to people who um, shared these ideas with me and gave me their templates. This is another example of just plan and label, do your math, what's your total give them monopoly money, let them count the money out to you. Just again, blending that in to a math lesson. Reflections in Seesaw, letting them take pictures of their packages, record answers to their questions. You can also use Flipgrid. Flipgrid is 100% free. Screencastify, just whatever video messaging options that you have with your district. This is just a reflection. You can talk about this out loud. Have them write, uh, answer one of the questions, write it on a post-it note, and give it to you like an exit ticket as they're leaving. Feel free to use these. Like these are not for you to just look at, but you can use them. Make a copy of the presentation, remix them, just give credit where credit is due. So back to the question that I asked earlier before you had your 15 minutes of plurn time. How will you use this with teachers or students, whoever you work with? You're going to use this link to go to Padlet. And if you will, take just a minute. See all of the, the responses. I mean, there are some just great ideas through here. Um, different grade level bands, not as much with high school, but a lot with K-5 and 6-8, any grade level, and how you can use it also with professional development. All you have to do with this is you just, um, whatever post you want to add, there's pluses down at the bottom, and you can just click on the plus, uh, title it, write something beautiful, um, publish it when you're done. You don't have to, this can be anonymous. You don't have to identify yourself and bookmark this. So come back and bookmark it. So that way you will continue to see 
ideas come in on how you can use this within your instructional day. I wanted to mention that this presentation does have a Creative Commons license in which, again, give credit where credit is due. You are free to remix, transform, or build upon the material, but you must still use the same Creative Commons license. Um, and this is non-commercial, which means you cannot use the material to sell it in any way, shape, or form. These are my references. Thank you so much for joining me with STEMations. Um, I enjoyed presenting to you. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions, want to think things through, or you want more information on something. I'd be happy to chat with you. My email is leslie.pope at cravenk12.org. Or you can also follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Ms. Pope Reads.